If you're a beginner in the world of car detailing or paint correction for that matter, you will find that there are several different types of machine polishers out there. And that's all well and good because each one has its own strengths and weaknesses. But if you're a beginner, it can get quite overwhelming because all you want to do at this stage is bring your car's paintwork back to its best. And with the research side of things, you will find that there is quite a lot of that to do before you even get started. You might have to find a different type of backing plate, different foam pads, microfiber pads, then you've got your compounds, and then we have to jump into which type of machine you wanna go for. It just seems a little bit too much for the beginner. However, if you're after something that's simple that would tick pretty much all of those boxes, then what I have in this bag right here could be the answer that you're looking for. This is what we have in the studio today, and it's a dual action polisher from Hyundai. And as far as budget polishers go, it's definitely in the cheaper price bracket. And beginners may just be tempted to go with brands they already know, such as Meguiar's or Auto Finesse, which is fair enough, but I just want to put this into perspective for you because the average cost for the Hyundai is around 74 to 80 pounds, which is good when you compare it to the Auto Finesse polisher, which is around 100 pounds, and it's almost half the price of Halford's own polisher, but that's nothing compared to the Meguiar's DA polisher, which is an eye watering 300 pounds on average. All of those machines are brilliant for the beginner, but for somebody who's just looking to jump into car detailing, you may not have a fortune to spend on other equipment, such as pressure washers or vacuum cleaners, and it can add up pretty quickly. So the aim for today's video is to try and find out if cheap really is cheerful. Right, so I've been looking forward to this one because I finally got my new polisher and this one's got quite a few goodies with it with this particular bundle and I will put links in the description below if you wanted to get exactly the same one. So straight out of the bag you get four pads. Now I've just taken some of these out of the packet just to show you but we have one wall pad here. Not something I always use, I don't really do a lot of polishing with wall pads, it's just not really my thing. But we have three foam pads here, soft, medium and a hard. As for the machine itself, look at this, that feels really nice and sturdy proper firm it's comfy on the hand and it doesn't feel too heavy either and I know these come with handles but for me I actually quite like holding it like this I don't really think that I would get on with a handle and I've actually done that with my other rotary polisher as well I just took the handles off because I felt like I could move around the vehicle a lot easier without them restricting me so you don't have to put these on all the time it will give you better safety in case your hand was to slip and you could do some damage on a car but other than that, I think you'll be fine. They also supply you with a toolkit and an instruction manual to help you get everything set up. Yeah, love that, looks awesome. Another thing I need to draw your attention to is, crikey, the size of this cable. That is really long, let's have a quick look at it. That's one thing I didn't make any notes on before I press record on the camera. I'm very intrigued to see how long this is because that's one of the biggest problems that I found with previous polishers. The cables were so short, I mean, you can get battery powered machines, they're pretty good, but the ones that I've had with the cables, they've been so short, you've had to connect an extension lead onto them and you're literally dragging this lead around. It just feels borderline dangerous. But this, oh my, this is probably like four or five meters. Wow. Dual action polishers are used for fixing paint defects. They work by combining two types of movements, First, the polishing pad spins in circles to remove the scratches and other issues. And secondly, the pad oscillates to prevent any damage to the paint, meaning this combination of the motions makes dual action polishers safer and easier to use compared to a rotary polisher. So we're gonna get started on the basics of machine polishing, but before we jump into that, there's a bit of vital information that I think you guys should really know. Now in the booklet, it says that you get three foam pads. And the thing is in that booklet, it says that the harshest one is the yellow pad. The problem is it's completely the opposite way around. The softest pad is the yellow one. So it's one thing that you need to be careful of. If you wanna be doing heavy cutting compounds with the foam pads that come with the polisher, you need to be starting off with the black one. But for me, for this occasion, we're just gonna be using the medium one, which is the orange pad. So it just goes to show how vital it is that you watch all the videos properly before you jump into it. If you see something different in another video, because I know Hyundai have already brought out a demonstration on the polisher, but I haven't actually gone back to check whether they're using the new pads or the old ones. So if they say start off with the yellow pad in that video, and you start off with the yellow pad and you're not getting the right results, you're soon gonna figure out why. 
Now, just to confirm that they have updated the manual. So now going forward from this point from 2023, these are going to be the correct foam densities, but always double check before you start. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's jump straight into the polishing. So when you put your foam pads on, make sure you get it bang in the middle because you want a perfect balance here. Make sure it's firmly on as well. And before we even get polishing, what we need to do is prime the pad for the first time. You're not gonna be doing this every single time, but on this occasion, we need to put some compound in, we need to work it into the pad so it's properly primed. Now you want to think of it a bit like when you're painting your walls, when you're decorating and you're using a roller, if you just dab it in the paint and start rolling it, you're not going to get a nice even finish. But if you prime it first by dabbing it in the paint and rolling it, you'll get a nice even coverage. And that's exactly the same method that we're going to be using with this polisher. At this stage, I'm lightly working some compound into the pad and you don't need much at all. And this is something I always do before I start polishing. What we're gonna do is with the bonnet, we're gonna break it down into four sections. It just makes it a bit more manageable. And one thing you should always do is put the cable over your shoulder because the last thing you wanna be doing is, I mean, I'm gonna demonstrate here on my Audi because quite frankly, it's not a problem. But if you've got the cable and you're leaning over like this, you could potentially risk causing scratches to the surface of the paint. Keep it over your shoulder and you're good to go. We're just gonna work on this section here now. So. Within that four stages, we're going to put five blobs. That's pretty much all we're going to go for. And we're just going to start on a slow speed and we're just going to prime this section here. Here I'm just priming the panel before I start with the actual cutting process. And all I'm doing here is just spreading it all over the areas I want to work on. So you don't need to cover the entire bonnet. And a few top tips for you using this polisher. Number one, you don't need to put pressure down. This high end A polisher is already designed in such a way that if you do apply too much pressure, it will stall, meaning the spinning motion will stop or slow down, so the lighter you work, the better the results. Number two, working too fast is a bad thing. You need to cover roughly one inch per second and let the machine do the work. Number three, don't tilt the machine polisher. Keep it as flat as possible on the surface and depending on the type of compound you're using, you could end up flicking it everywhere and it will make a right mess. And lastly, please do not overload the pad. The key is less product, smaller sections, and keeping that pad clean after each section. Right, so let's have a look, see what we're left with. I so badly want to machine polish this whole car, but there's so much peeling paint on it. Wow, that looks even better. I was quite impressed with this paint anyway, considering I paid 1,500 pounds for the car. It's lovely. Do you know what? This Audi's paintwork looks too good for this video. I think we need to try it on something that has black paint heavily scratched, and I guess it would be wrong if I wasn't using it on a Hyundai for this video. Yep, I just bought a Kia Sportage, and although it doesn't have a Hyundai badge on it, technically underneath it is. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this Hyundai, you owe me five grand for this prop. I'll email the invoice over tonight. No, I'm just kidding. No, seriously, it's got to be paid in the next 30 days. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decontaminate the paintwork just on this half because I did get this for my wife yesterday and I promised her I'd give it a massive deep clean, but I'm so busy doing other bits, I just haven't got time to do it. So I'm just gonna focus on this half for today, and then I'm gonna come back and film it another day doing the whole shebang. So my thinking is give it a quick decontamination, quick machine polish, and I'm literally gonna spend about five to 10 minutes on it. That's all I'm gonna do. And I'm not gonna go OTT, because I wanna show you the sort of results you can get using one pad and one compound only because the idea of this video is to keep it as simple as possible. So in this light here, you can see how bad this paintwork is. It's been used through so many of those mechanical car washes, not the ones where everybody jumps all over it, but yeah, the actual drive through ones and it has had an absolute paste in. I'm feeling confident, let's get cracking and get polishing. I'm starting off by giving it a clay bar and normally I would carry out this treatment during the wash stage, but for today at least this is the chosen method. All right, that's just about done now. So all I'm gonna do is get this residue off, use a little bit of panel wipe, and then I'm good to go. Lovely. I'm now using a heavier cutting pad along with a heavy compound and I'll be listing some of my favourites in the description below along with discount codes too to help you save along the way. And speaking of pads, these three that come with the machine are plenty good enough for the beginner. Right, so I just need to wipe away any of the remaining residue and I'll tell you what, while we're on the subject of wiping away, get yourself some of these microfiber cloths. I'll put links in the description below but what I love about them they don't have any tags on. 
And no matter how many times you try to remember to take the tags off, it's something that I always still do to this day. I always forget to rip them off. And if you don't, you can risk causing further scratching. So these are really good. That is fantastic. So here's something you need to think about because if you are somebody who's just dipping your toe into car cleaning or you really are gonna be starting your business, then this is a pretty good example for you to be getting on with. And don't forget that you get all the foam pads with it as well. So all you really need to do is just get yourself some compound. So what did I think about the polisher overall? Well, when you factor in all the things like the price and what you get for your money, it's a pretty good all rounder. And I could still achieve the same results that I would get with a more expensive polisher. But I'm not gonna sit here and say, this is the best thing that money can buy. But if you are somebody who's on a budget, this is the best alternative. And I want you to put aside your thoughts of becoming, say, a pro detailer at this stage. This is mainly aimed at the beginners and the enthusiasts, not somebody who's gonna be using it day in, day out. Obviously, you are gonna to wanna to upgrade in time, but that sort of comes with everything you buy, whether it's pressure washers, vacuum cleaners, or air compressors for that matter. You have to start somewhere, and I think this is a good starting place. So this just goes to show that you should never feel bad about buying cheaper tools or products in life because you win some, you lose some. But on this occasion, this one's a winner. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But if you love videos like this or you wanna know more about the business side of things, then I have two brilliant videos you can go and watch right here.